All right, so this is going to be part two of my first look at Serato Scratch Live 1.9. Now, one of the big new features in 1.9 is the new history slash review area and this new algorithm to determine which songs turn green and which songs don't. Because, uh, see, the problem with the old versions uh, was when you loaded a song to a deck, it automatically turned green and got marked as played. Uh, now, a lot of times when you load a song to a deck, you're just previewing it to see if it goes well. And a lot of times it doesn't, so you go and load up another new track to the deck. Uh, the problem is, though, that the song, the previous song, turned green and got marked as played. Uh, so later on in your set, it's hard to actually determine what songs you really did play and what songs you didn't play. You just loaded to a deck and previewed and they didn't go well or you wanted to play them later or something. Uh, they are all, they turned green and they got marked as played. But now with this new algorithm, uh, this doesn't happen. And it works really well, in my opinion, so I'm going to go through and explain how it works. So let me load a song to the left deck. Uh, so this will be my first song. And you'll notice that it doesn't turn green, and it's not marked as played in the history area. And as you can see, the history area looks uh, a lot different now. I'm going to get into that uh, after I explain the algorithm. Okay, so I loaded my first song to the left deck. Let's play it. And uh, let me jump into the end of the track a little bit. So, all right. Uh, obviously, there's only two decks to scratch live, the left deck or the right deck. And the song on the left deck is playing to the audience right now, so I can only load a song to the right deck. Now, when you load the song to the right deck, that is when the first song on the left deck turns green and gets marked as played in the history area. Uh, so now I can go through and keep loading songs to the right deck, uh, previewing them, uh, seeing if they go well. So, uh, And you'll notice they are not turning green uh, here when you load them to the right deck, and they also are not getting marked as played in the history area. So I can go through until I find a song I want to play, say, um, I don't know, uh, this one right here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to mix this song in. Well, I'm not actually going to mix it, but okay. Playing the song on the right deck, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, song on the left deck is done now. So obviously we can only load a new song into the left deck because the right deck song is playing to the audience right now. So when I load a new song to the left deck, that is when the song on the right deck gets turns green and gets marked as played in the history area. So you kind of see how that works now. There's kind of like a one song delay before a song turns green and gets marked as played. Uh, this is called the ABA algorithm or the left, right, left algorithm. So again, I can keep loading songs into the left deck now and they do not turn green or get marked as played in the history area until I find a new song that I want to play. Okay, I found this song, okay. Uh, on the Loaded on the left deck. Let's play it. Uh, mix it in, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, stop the right deck song. So the song on the left deck is playing to the audience now, so we can only load to the right deck. And that is when the song on the left deck will get will turn green and get marked as played in the history area. So this is the new algorithm to uh, determine which songs turn green and which songs don't. This is the ABA algorithm. And uh, as I mentioned, it works pretty well. And I think it works better than a threshold timer, say, uh, don't mark a song as green until you play it for 30 seconds or 45 seconds or whatever. Uh, so this new algorithm is one of the new features in 1.9. And the history area is the other half of this. Uh, this has been greatly improved. And we finally get a way to export our history to text files. Uh, this has been a long-standing feature request for years now, is, is to be able to export your uh, set list to a text file. Uh, well, now this is possible in 1.9. Uh, let me load up a couple more tracks first, though, just to get a nice uh, bigger list. So... Uh, uh, left, or right, left, right, left, right. Let me load a couple more to the right just to show you something. Left, right, left, 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 right, left, right. Okay, so going to the history now, I have a lot more songs now to show you. Okay, so uh, there's a couple buttons down here that I'll explain. Uh, so you're going to have the date of your set, which is going to be this listing right here. Now when you uh, click on the date and highlight it, you'll see this button up here called Export. And then the format. You have three different formats to export your set list to. You can do it as a plain text file, a CSV file, which is a comma separated value file. Now uh, This is good if you want to open the file in Excel or a spreadsheet program. And this will separate everything uh, like it's shown up here into the different columns. Uh, there's also M3U, a playlist file, which you can... Uh, open this file in iTunes or Winamp and then we'll import all the songs uh, uh, into that program. Uh, also, if you don't know, you can also import M3U files to crates in Scratch Live, which I'm going to demonstrate in just a minute. 
so these buttons over here, start session, end session, and insert track. Uh, if you want to start a new uh, set list session, click on end session first, and that'll end the current one. And this is collapsible also. And then click on start, and that will make a new um, set list recording history. Uh, and let's say you play a normal vinyl or something in Scratch Live between two songs, you can uh, just highlight the song and then click on insert track, and this will bring up a, a menu uh, row to that you can double click and edit and type in the name of the normal vinyl that you played or CD or whatever. Uh, but I don't play normal vinyl anymore and I'm 100% Scratch Live. But anyways, let's get back, get back to the, uh, the bigger feature, exporting uh, sessions to text files. So as I mentioned, highlight the date. Uh, click on the format button that you want, so let's select text file, click on export, and you'll see this message down here pop up. Uh, session exported to users, my name, music, scratch live, history export, date, and text file. So basically these files get exported into your main scratch live folder on your internal drive. Uh, the scratch live folder is in your music folder on a Mac or your my music folder on a PC. Uh, let me also export it to a CSV and M3U. Uh, so yep, just select the format and click on export. Now let's go take a look at those files on my hard drive. So as I mentioned, it'll be in the Scratch Live folder on your music folder. So here's the Scratch Live folder. And then in that folder, you're going to have another folder called History Export. You go in there and then you'll see the CSV M3U or text file that you exported. Uh, click on one of them to open them up in your default application. Uh, it's going to be text edit on my Mac. And then so here we go. Now we have a nice printout of our set list that we played in Scratch Live. Uh, so this is good for a lot of you radio DJs that have to have a printout of your set list that you have to turn into your program director, your music director, or whoever. Um, so yeah, this is the exporting your set list to a text file option now in 1.9. Uh, very handy indeed. Uh, important thing to note though, that this history area up here now does not get cleared when you exit Scratch Live. Uh, that was uh, kind of a, a problem, uh, quote-unquote, with the older versions, is when you exited Scratch Live, uh, the review area got cleared. Well, now this doesn't happen. Uh, so every time you start Scratch Live, it's going to start a new uh, recording session history thingy. And uh, so basically you're going to have an, an entire saved history now of every set you play in Scratch Live. Uh, so this is good if you want to go back and look at your old sets that you played, what you played in the club last night, last week. Uh, and then you can see, uh, you know, what you played, what worked, what didn't work. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, this is greatly improved in 1.9, and uh, it's one of the big new features, and uh, I think this is going to make a lot of people happy. Ooh, also down here, there's this option to show unplayed tracks. If you check that box, uh, this will display all the tracks that you loaded to a deck but did not play. And these will be the, the gray listing songs. Those are the ones that you loaded to a deck but did not play. And then obviously the green ones are the songs that you did play. And then the clear button is the same as, as it's always been. Click that and that will turn all the green songs uh, back to white. Uh, so that is the new history area and the loading algorithm, uh, the ABA algorithm in Scratch Live 1.9. Uh, very nice indeed. Uh, as I also mentioned, let me delete that out. Um, one thing you can do is uh, drag the date name to a new crate in Scratch Live. So you can just drag it over there and that will make a new crate in Scratch Live of your uh, set. Because see, the, the up here it doesn't display all the columns that it does in a normal crate, like the, the BPM or the genre or the length or anything like that. There's just these uh, uh, locked columns that uh, these are the only ones that can show. And so if you want to make your set a normal crate, you can drag it over there uh, to a new crate or down here on the plus button. Or optionally, you can import the M3U file that you exported back into a new crate also. Uh, so yeah, so this is the new uh, history and uh, algorithm in Scratch Live 1.9. Uh, very good indeed and handy, and I think this is going to make a lot of people happy. Uh, so that's I'm about running out of time on this video, so uh, let's go into video 3 now and take a look at the big one everyone's been waiting for, the drop sampler.